OneDrive for Business, the app that we all know and love, right? Well, we may love it, but not all of us know it. In fact, when I'm working with people most days, I actually find that yes, OneDrive is used the most regularly, but there are so many questions people have and how it all works and how it comes together. Well, in this video, I'm gonna both explain how it works and we're gonna focus on it through the lens of the new OneDrive experience. We're now introducing today the third generation of OneDrive. Because yes, Microsoft have changed the way that OneDrive works. And we're gonna look at the new portal experience and how you can easily use it to improve how you manage your files and work with files across Teams and SharePoint and have OneDrive help you out. And before we dive in, I'd love it if you hit that like button, but not only that, subscribe to this channel to find more great content like this that turns you into a productivity superstar. When it comes to using a new OneDrive app, getting to it is actually pretty simple. All we need to do is go to office.com in a browser and then click on the app launcher in the top left, which otherwise looks like a bit like a waffle. Then click on the OneDrive icon. They'll then open OneDrive on the web. Now that does mirror what we're gonna see later inside of Teams and the like. And on that note, I do find that using a Teams app with a new OneDrive experience is probably the easiest way to get into it. So go ahead and open the new Teams app. And within there, you'll see the OneDrive app on the left-hand side. You can go ahead and click that and you'll find the same experience that we just found a moment ago in the web browser. If you can't see the OneDrive app, you can click on the free dot menu and then search for the app called OneDrive and then go ahead and add it into your Teams app on the left-hand side. It'll open exactly what we can see here on my screen. And on the third option, you can get into OneDrive from your local computer. All we need to do is go down to the blue cloud icon for OneDrive in your taskbar on the right hand side of Windows and then select view online. That again will then default to open into your default browser window. And once again, we get the same experience. There's three simple ways to get in to the new OneDrive app within Microsoft 365. So getting around OneDrive is actually pretty straightforward. In fact, I think it's vastly improved. I've opened OneDrive here inside of the browser window. And what we can immediately see on the left-hand side is a lot of new capabilities. For example, the first that actually did cause me some confusion early on was how on earth do I add new files and folders into OneDrive? Because the old button where new or upload had just disappeared. Now to do that, we can click on the blue button that says add new. And inside of that, we get a similar dropdown. We go ahead and create a new root folder in our OneDrive, create a new document using one of the online apps inside of 365, or go ahead and upload files or a folder from your local computer, just like we're doing now. It's actually pretty straightforward, but for some reason, I was never able to actually make out that button on the top left. But now, in case you're in the same position, it's as easy as clicking on that blue button. As we can then see on the left-hand side, we've got the ability to see this Home tab now the Home tab will actually have quick access to all of your files across Microsoft 365. Yes, they will not just be OneDrive files and folders. And at the top, you can see a For You section. That's content that's been suggested for me to check out. Maybe I regularly use that document and therefore it's also prompting me to have quick access to it. And in fact, this cross-cultural marketing campaign, as I mentioned, is not in my OneDrive. In fact, it's in one of my SharePoint sites called Marketing but it's still suggested and easily accessible from inside of the OneDrive app. Now, in addition to that, we also see, of course, our recent files. Once again, not limited to OneDrive. There's our cross-cultural marketing campaigns files I've just opened inside of the browser. And we can see I can once again access it quite quickly. I also see who the file owner is when I last opened it and if there's been any activity inside of that file. In fact, we even see Microsoft loop files. A common question I've had so far is, how can we get back to some of your loop files? Well, you can very simply open them from your OneDrive files experience. But not only that, whilst you can access your files quickly, you can also access where they are stored even easier. For example, the PowerPoint for cross-cultural marketing campaigns is pretty easy by left-clicking and opening it. But I also know it's in my marketing site, which I wanna work on again. All I need to do is click on the marketing link and it will open the documents area inside of my marketing site with quick access to all of my files in that site. 
So you can use that recent tab to both have quick access to your files and the sites and teams where those files live. Even better, do you want to filter through that content or search? Well, you can use the filter by name or person to be able to filter through that content. For example, if I am looking for that marketing campaign, I can just go ahead and type in the word marketing. And I can then filter all of that content as we can see directly through this experience. And again, is it a PowerPoint file? Well, click on the PowerPoint filter to work with the filter term I've just applied to find that relevant content. Nice and easy to get back to all of your recent files inside of the OneDrive app. But whilst this is useful, you of course want to access all of your OneDrive files and you can do that on the left hand side. And this provides a view of all of your files and folders stored in OneDrive for Business. Once again, you can have quick access to them because through the browser and in the Teams app, we can easily go into any of these documents or Excel spreadsheets and open and edit them through the browser with all of the changes synced back straight into Microsoft 365. So it's very straightforward to get to all of your files inside of OneDrive. So before we get OneDrive out, let's take a short break and I'd love to tell you more about what your 365 coach is doing to give you the skills to become a productivity superstar. Because yes, we've heard from your feedback. You'd love to know more around tools like SharePoint and Microsoft Teams. And we know that file management and managing your files is super important to you because it's one of those areas that can cause us a whole heap of anxiety when it comes to things like co-editing, uploading files, be able to restore them, version control, and sharing them securely with others. And we're gonna take one of our live courses that we've run for businesses across the world and transition it into a brand new remote learning course that you can take 24 seven, be able to learn the skills to remove that anxiety and managing your all important files in SharePoint and Teams. And if you'd like to enroll and access that course, head to the web link below to find out more. We'd love to see you on one of our courses and support the journey of your 365 coach. Otherwise, let's get back to OneDrive and check out that new experience. And not only that, in your files tab, you might want to work with files quite regularly that you would want to favorite to get quick access to later. Well, all we need to do is go down and find one of the files you want to work on. Here's a Teams training deck I'm working on. All I then need to do is click on the star or the favorite icon to favorite that. And we'll also have quick access to any files that you favorite under the favorites tab on the left. So if you work with files across all of SharePoint Teams and OneDrive, it's a real easy way to get back to them quickly by marking them as a favorite. And equally, if you no longer want to have access to them for the favorites menu, well, just go to one of them and unfavorite by removing that star icon. It's then removed from your favorites list and you won't be able to access it through there again. But that's a quick way to access all of your files and also add into favorites. But that's not all. The files tab is also easier because we can now use color coding Yes, we can now change folders from yellow to a different color. And that might not seem like a great change, but it works really well. For example, let's go and create ourselves a new folder. And here I'm gonna call it restricted. It may have some files relating to me, which is quite confidential. You can now see I can set a folder color. It's gonna be the default yellow or orange color. And instead let's mark it as red and select create. We can now see the new restricted folder is marked in red, a visual indication that could have confidential data in, so I shouldn't share it with others. But can we also change folder colors on other folders inside of OneDrive that already exist? And of course we can. In fact, I have my recordings folder here. All I then need to do is click on the freed up menu next to the folder name, and under the folder color icon, I can then change it into a green coloring and change it to any other color that I'd also prefer. So you can do that to organize your OneDrive and your files tab to make it more easier to understand at a glance when it comes to understanding all of those important colors. But something we usually find quite difficult is trying to find files that are shared with us or by us. And the OneDrive app allows us to do that pretty easily. On the left hand side here, we have this shared button and the shared area shows me all files that have been shared with me. So in this way, this file has been shared by Alex, it's been shared by my account, and this one has been shared by Deborah. 
That means I've quick access to open the file from Deborah's OneDrive, which I've been granted read-only access to check out, review it and close it. And the same applies to making any changes. But equally, what happens if you share content with others? It's always difficult later to understand what you've shared and revoke sharing rights. When under the buy you tab, you can see all of your shared content and it's very straightforward then to change. For example, a PDF here has been shared and it's coming from my file section in my OneDrive. What I can easily do is click on the share button inside of the OneDrive app and then click on the icon down the bottom showing everyone who has access to the file. Under the links section, we now see the sharing link that I originally created sharing with these individuals. I could now go and edit that link by removing access for specific people or delete the link entirely and remove that sharing capability. And once we've done that, that sharing link will now be revoked. So that's a quick way to manage all of the files that have been shared with you or by you via the OneDrive app. But equally, things can go wrong, and that includes deleting your files and folders. In fact, I've got some content here. I've just highlighted it, and I've accidentally gonna hit the delete button, and hit the delete button once again, completely by accident, and they're now going to be deleted from my OneDrive. If I've synced that to my computer, that will also delete it from that location, causing me a few problems. But how do we get these files and folders back? Well, on the left hand side, you can quickly access all of the files and folders you've deleted. Here are the two folders we have deleted just now. We can see who it's deleted by, the original location and time and date. To get them back, all we need to do is click into those folders and click on the restore button. In doing so, those will be restored back in place, with all the content included in those folders and even the sharing links. So using your recycle bin through OneDrive, can certainly help you get back those files and folders you've accidentally deleted. And some of the massive improvements in the OneDrive app come in from looking at files that people that you're actually working with. In fact, we can see here Deborah, who I work with quite regularly, I have access to look at Deborah's files that have been shared with me. Here, I click into Deborah's names and I can actually see the content that we've worked with that individual on so I can browse files easily by people inside of the organization. Likewise, under meetings, if you've had any meetings or upcoming, you can easily click into any of these catch-ups and play back the recording or files shared really easily without going anywhere near the Teams app. So be able to look for the files shared with you in meetings, get back to them pretty easily through OneDrive is totally possible through this new tab. And as you know, working in files in SharePoint Teams can become a bit of a drag when you start working in 10 or 20 different locations. And we can easily get back to them through quick access in our OneDrive app. In fact, here are three different locations I've pinned inside of my OneDrive quick access to get back to quickly. And this content is stored both in SharePoint and Teams. I can click into my channels and find content to make changes to it and even upload new content. And not only that, it also shows you recent locations you've worked with. In our marketing area, I've used that quite recently and I can have quick access through the OneDrive app and I can also pin it to use it quickly later on back inside of our OneDrive app. Nice and easy to get back to files and folders that you work with inside of SharePoint and Teams. But let's take a refresher because as we know, OneDrive is not all about using it on the web or even using it through the Teams app. In fact, most people I work with are using it on their local desktop. We can sync our files down to our computer. So let's use this as an opportunity to refresh you on how that sync process works and also how you can work with these files offline later, again, using the OneDrive app. Well, as we can see, this now shows me by clicking open folder, all of the files available on my local computer. And that's because OneDrive is syncing them to my computer to have quick access into. I can simply drag, drop and create new content that syncs straight back to the cloud in OneDrive for Business. In fact, if we scroll down and check in one of these files here, we can see on the right hand side, we even now see a details tab showing us all of the recent activity. And not only that, because the content is stored inside of the cloud, we can right click it and we can also create a sharing link straight from this content on your local computer and share a secure link with someone directly within OneDrive or via your Windows Explorer. Now that's great, 
but something you may get stuck with is actually all of these files live in the cloud. And this uses a technology using files on demand. What we can see visibly on my screen here, I have a number of blue clouds. I also have a few light green ticks. Now a blue cloud denotes that file lives in the cloud. If my computer was to become for offline for any reason, I will not be able to access those files. So if you go to a supplier or a customer meeting with no Wi-Fi connection and you double click on one of these files, well, it simply won't work. That meeting's not gonna go the way you'd hoped. But instead, what we can do is we can access files either before we go. In that example, by double clicking into one of my files here, let's assume our marketing slogan suggestions for Q3, it'll download as we can see to my computer, open inside of the Word app. Now at which point, if I go and close down this document immediately, you'll see the tick has now been replaced, that blue cloud has disappeared. And the light green tick means the copy has been downloaded to my computer to make changes and we sync back to the cloud. And that does provide limited access offline. Because a copy has been synced locally, it'll keep it up to date. But if the file's not being used, it will be returned back to the cloud and replaced with the cloud icon once again. Now that might sound great, but equally terrifying when it comes to working with clients offline or going on a long flight. So how can you have quick access to your files? Well, instead here of me double clicking before I go and working with that file, I can right click a file inside of my OneDrive and I can mark it to always keep on this device. And when you've done that, you'll notice a change. The light green tick has been replaced with a very bold tick. If I double click it, well, it's not downloading from the cloud. Instead, it's keeping a copy on my local computer, which is synchronized back to the cloud. It also means when I'm traveling, I can open this file, make changes, and then when I close the file, it'll sync back when I get back online. That, therefore, is a great way to work your files offline. So there you have it, OneDrive for Business, and how you can get the most from the latest experience, and also understanding how it all comes together so you can improve your productivity by saving all of that important time. Now, I'd love to know how you use OneDrive for Business and your thoughts in the comments. Not only that, of course, if this video has helped, please hit that like button, but even better, subscribe to our channel. We put out content like this every single week to turn you into a productivity superstar and give you the skills to be able to save that all important time to do better things in life. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next one.